Good day, class. Welcome to Practical Potions for Pathfinder. Now turn to page 551 of the Core Rulebook. Okay, kidding. The entire video is not going to be me doing a bad Snape imitation. Although, seriously, page 551 of the Pathfinder Core Rulebook has all the information you need for crafting potions. But a lot of other important details about it are kind of spread throughout the book, so I'm just going to condense it all for you right now. Potion brewing is one of the things that I really like about Pathfinder, but it's one of the things that I never find that I really have time to sit down and do in-game. And also, it's kind of hard to figure out how exactly to do it. Alright, so first off, to brew potions, you need a couple of things to start off with. The first absolute thing you need is the brew potion feat. Certain classes get brew potion as a bonus feat, i.e. the alchemist. Which, ironically, is not actually the best class for brewing potions, but uh, we'll deal with that later. If you take the Witch Hex Cauldron, you get Brew Potion as a bonus feat, as well as a plus four proficiency bonus at brewing potions, and other craft alchemy type things, which is neat. But really, the best classes for potion brewing are Cleric and Wizard. And Druid, but I don't really care for their spell list quite as much. Okay, so once you know what potion you're going to make, you need to spend gold on raw materials. This is kept really vague as to what it is, and I'm going to cover kind of how I think that should work game-wise at the end of the video. But there's a gold price. So once you have all your raw materials, however the DM decides you get it, then you have to make a craft check. That's going to be 5 plus the spell level of the potion you're making. And the final ingredient in the process is time. To brew a potion, it takes two in-game hours, if the price is under 250 gold or less. If it's over that, it takes one day per 1,000 gold of the price. Now, there aren't really a lot of potions which are going to run you more than 1,000 gold, so you won't really be spending more than a day on one potion. Alright, now for figuring out how much a potion is actually going to cost you, it's a real simple equation. It's 25 gold times the spell level times the caster level. This is what makes it cheaper to brew potions with some classes versus other classes. So both Wizard and Cleric both get a new spell level basically every two levels. So you start off at level 1, casting level 1 spells, obviously. Then by level 3, you're casting level 2 spells. And then by level 5, you're casting level 3 spells. Oh, by the way, you cannot make a potion of any spell above spell level 3. So just bear that in mind. Now say you're trying to brew a potion as an alchemist, who only has six spell levels, and you move to the next spell level tier every three levels. What that's going to do is it's going to throw off the caster level portion of the equation. So if you're making a potion of Cure Moderate Wounds for your alchemist, at minimum level it's going to be 25 gold times spell level, which is 2, times caster level, which is going to be 4, which is more expensive then a cleric making the same potion, which would be 25 gold, times spell level, which is 2, times caster level, which is 3. Alright, now let's move into some of the potions which I consider to be the most useful, starting with the cleric. First off is Cure Light Wounds, obviously. Now, you're going to want to make this at the maximum caster level, so you get that additional 5 hit points on top of the d8 that you roll. So that's going to be 25 times spell level, which is 1, times 5 which adds up to 125 gold. Alright, next up is Protection From. This can be protection from evil, protection from chaos, protection from law, protection from good if you're that kind of party. Anyway, this is going to be one of your all-time cheap potions. It's 25 gold times caster level, which is 1, times spell level, which is also 1, and that adds up to 25 gold. Now, you're only going to have this for a minute, but in combat time, that adds up to 10 rounds. Which is a long time, and a lot of fights aren't really going to run over that. Next up, Shield of Faith. This is another cheapie. 25 times spell level, which is 1, times caster level, which is 1. You got it for a minute. Alright, once we move one caster level up to level 2 spells, that unlocks the whole family of buffs. That's your Bear's Endurance, your Bull's Strength, Eagle Splendor, Fox's Cunning, Owl's Wisdom, and all of those are potentially good to have a potion of, and they can be made relatively cheaply. Relatively. So, any of those are going to be 25 times spell level 2 times caster level 3, adding up to 150 gold. 
one minute per caster level, so that's going to be three minutes, or 30 rounds. Next up, Cure Moderate. This is where you're going to get a little bit pricey. To get the full benefit out of a potion of Cure Moderate, you're going to want to make it at the highest caster level you can cast at. Of course, this is going to cap out at 10. Oh, by the way, you can't brew a potion over the caster level that you're at. So you can't, at level 8, brew a potion of Cure Moderate Wounds at caster level 10. But anyway, to make the best possible potion of Cure Moderate Wounds, it's going to be 25 gold, times spell level, which is 2, times caster level, which is going to be 10. And that's going to add up to 500 gold. Another really good one, which is relatively cheap, is Resist Energy. Now, when you brew the potion, you are going to have to pick what type of energy you want to resist. That's fire, cold, electricity, or acid. And it gives you 10 points of resistance. So, if you're going up against something that you know does energy damage, I would say definitely have these potions for the party. Now, the price is going to be 25 gold, times spell level, which is 2, times caster level, which is 3, 150 gold per unit. Finally, let's look at your level 3 cleric potions. Now... At some point, I suppose you can make a Cure Serious Wounds potion at its maximum caster level, which is 15, and that's probably going to be the priciest potion you're going to be making. It's going to be 25 gold, times spell level, which is 3, times caster level, which will be 15. That'll be 1,125 gold. Alright, this next potion is a little bit more for DMs because you may just want to leave these for parties with a lot of martial characters that you know you plan on giving diseases to, and that's a potion of remove disease. In order to make those, it's going to be 25 gold, times spell level, which is 3, times caster level, which is 5. That's going to be 375 gold. These aren't really that useful because after they drink it, they'll need to roll a check in order to see if they remove the disease, and this is one of the ones that it's best if the cleric is actually on hand to cast it. But if they're going to buy one of these from a shop, uh, it'll be double the price of actually crafting it yourself. Alright, this next potion is one that really every heavy armored guy should have if he's going anywhere near water. And that is a potion of water breathing. Because if your DM is uh, kind of mean, he may just drop you in that water and make you make a swim check in your full plate. Good luck with that. A potion of water breathing will cost... 25 gold, times spell level, which is 3, times caster level, which is 5. This will run you 375 gold and give you 5 hours of water breathing. I think you can just Pirates of the Caribbean walk to the shore. Finally, the last really useful cleric potion I can think of is water walking. This allows you to walk on the surface of water. That's going to be 25 gold, times spell level, 3, times caster level 5, 375 gold, and that's 10 minutes per level. So that's 50 minutes. And this can really change the dynamics of any water-based battle. All right, now let's move on to the potions that wizards can bring to the table. First off, there's Endure Elements, which is really a very useful thing to have, especially if you're going into climate conditions that are really cold or really hot, and your DM cares about rules like that. Now, because the wizard does not really get that many spells per day, it's really best to just store these in the form of potions. That's true for a lot of the spells that I'm going to recommend. So anyway, back to Endure Elements. It's going to be 25 gold times caster level 1 times spell level 1, 25 gold for a full day of resisting hot and cold weather. All right, this next one is going to be for any fighter or just anyone who doesn't have a shield. And that's a potion of shield. And hell, even the guys who do have shield, the shield potion is really better than the shield that they have. Unless it's like a super awesome, amazing, magical one with nifty abilities. Because it's a plus four to their AC. Anyway, a potion of shield that'll last one minute in combat, remember that's ten rounds, is only going to cost you 25 gold. Same thing with mage armor. Now guys like rogues or whatever really should have a potion of mage armor. Because that's going to up their AC beyond what their plus... 2 to AC leather armor or whatever they have on will do. Alright, up next, Potions of True Strike. These are great fun, especially for anyone who wants to do called shots. What True Strike does is it adds a plus 20 to your next die roll to hit. And your Potion of True Strike is probably the cheapest thing in the world to make at 25 gold. So just have your gunslinger pop one of those and call shot head all day. 
All right, next up, potions of reduce and enlarge person. This is only going to last for a minute, but that's 10 rounds. And it can really help certain classes, like barbarians, where you're not going to miss that AC from being a large category creature that much, because you've got a bunch of health and you can just tank it. And you get size bonuses to strength and, I believe, constitution. Now, reduce person is good for certain casting classes, where your damage isn't really affected by your size. Also, rogues can potentially benefit from having their size reduced, because a lot of their damage comes from precision, not so much the size of the actual weapon that they're using. Alright, this is another personal favorite spell of mine, and that's Expeditious Retreat. What this does is gives you an additional 30 feet to your movement. This is great for any of your gap-closing characters. A potion of Expeditious Retreat, which will last you one minute, 10 combat rounds, will cost 25 gold, as it can be brewed at Spell Level 1, Caster Level 1. Up next, Potions of Featherfall. These are potential lifesavers. As nothing will kill you faster than that combination of trying to make an ability check like Climb and a crappy dice roll. What Featherfall does is it slows your fall speed to 60 feet per round, and if you hit the ground before the spell effect ends, you take no damage. But it only lasts for one round per caster level. So what I recommend is brewing it above the minimum to around caster level 5. This will make the potion a little more expensive at 125 gold. That's going to be 25 times 1 times 5. But that is going to give you 300 feet to play with. Alright, moving up to spell level 2. See invisible. Invisible creatures can really mess up your day. Especially if you're something like a fighter. And you've got that nasty 50% miss chance. A potion of see invisible is going to cost you 150 gold. Because it's 25 gold times spell level 2, times caster level 3. Next, Spider Climb. That'll be 25 gold, times spell level 2, times caster level 3, for 30 minutes of being able to walk on walls. This is another one that can save your life, especially from a nasty fall. Finally, level 3 spells. First up, there's Fly. A little bit more expensive at 25, times spell level 3, times caster level 5, 375 gold. But this does give you a whole array of exciting new maneuver options, and it may really be the only way to get your martial fighters up to certain flying creatures. Like, you know, dragons. Finally, haste. This is again another one great for any guy who's got a sword and he's planning on doing that full attack action. Because it's going to give him an extra attack, more movement speed, and a plus one to AC. It's not really that expensive at 375 gold. Okay, let's end by talking just a little about what RP-wise the wizard or cleric or whoever's making the potion is doing. Now, obviously, from the intro, when I think about brewing potions, I can't help but think about Professor Snape. Now, I don't really like how they do potions in Harry Potter, just because it really kind of comes down to just tossing a bunch of stuff in a cauldron and, and letting it simmer. Just for flavor, I really like the Dresden Files, and their description of how potions work. If you're interested in reading specifically how Dresden potions work, I've got a link to the wiki down in the description. But no matter how you choose to explain it game-wise, there's a specific gold price for materials that your wizard or your cleric needs to pay in order to make a potion, and you just explain that how you will. And hopefully this video has given you an idea of how to brew potions and how to use them to make your party more effective. Thank you for watching D6 Damage, and if you're interested in more class, character, and strategy videos, check us out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.